These pictures were filmed just three days ago. Some of the 19 civilians reported killed in airstrikes near the Yemeni capital Sana'a. The only air forces dropping bombs in Yemen are Saudi Arabia's, along with other members of its nine-country military coalition. Tens of thousands of people have been injured, and the UN reckons around half of those killed in this war are civilians. At around 4 a.m., the first missile hit, then the second, the third, fourth, fifth and sixth missile, all on innocent civilians, women and children. They have no weapons, they have nothing. In September, anti-Saudi TV channels broadcast these pictures of an airstrike on a ceramics factory in Sana'a. Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch carried out a joint investigation and concluded that this was a civilian target with at least one civilian killed. What's more, they produced fragments of a British-made missile at the scene, built by Marconi in the 1990s. The bomb may have been dropped by another Gulf ally, though the UK admits the Saudis are not just dropping British bombs in Yemen, but also flying British-built aircraft, with the British supplying technical support and liaison officers to the Saudi-led coalition. The UN's head of humanitarian affairs has condemned these Saudi-led airstrikes as breaching international law. And because of this conflict, Yemen is now on the brink of famine. Well over two million people displaced. More than 60% of Yemenis close to starvation, according to the UN. The UN has also accused these Iranian-backed Houthi rebels of deliberately obstructing humanitarian aid in their battle with forces loyal to Yemen's internationally recognized president. At least two children were killed when the Houthis shelled the city of Taz last month. But what of Britain's supply of weapons to the Saudis? Well, it seems that they haven't stopped. UK export licenses to Saudi Arabia were worth more than £1.7 billion in the first six months of this year. NGOs reckon over a thousand bombs were exported from the UK in the first half of 2015, with licenses also granted for combat aircraft. The UN reckons over 5,600 people have been killed in Yemen since March, with the majority dying in Saudi-led coalition airstrikes. That includes hundreds of women and children, with over 26,000 people injured. The Saudis repeatedly deny targeting civilians, and they say they take all precautions. Though these pictures, which we can't verify, apparently show the aftermath of a Médecins Sans Frontières hospital attacked from the air in October. The UN condemned this attack, and MSF had given the coalition the hospital's coordinates. Now human rights groups, including Amnesty International, are accusing the UK of breaking British, EU and international law. Tomorrow's legal opinion concludes that the UK is likely to have breached the Arms Control Treaty at the very least since July 2015, by which date the aerial bombardment of Sana'a had occurred. It says the UK should halt with immediate effect all authorizations and transfers of relevant weapons pending an inquiry and that any authorization by the UK of the transfer of weapons or other items to Saudi Arabia in circumstances where such weapons are capable of being used in the conflict in Yemen would constitute a breach by the UK of its obligations under domestic, European and international law. There's supposed to be a ceasefire in Yemen this week, a seven-day truce, but both sides broke it today with residents claiming that Saudi-led airstrikes have continued. The question is why British arms exports to Saudi Arabia have also continued, despite this appalling war. Jonathan Rugland reporting. Well, we asked the government for an interview on this story, as well as Conservative members of the Foreign Affairs, the Defence and the Business Select Committees. None was available. The Foreign Office told us that the UK is satisfied that we are not in breach of our international obligations. We operate one of the most rigorous and transparent arms export control regimes in the world. We regularly raise with the Saudi Arabian-led coalition and the Houthis the need to comply with international humanitarian laws. We monitor the situation carefully and have offered the Saudi authorities advice and training in this area.